Right, uh, we've come on a long journey uh, together. Um, I've enjoyed kind of going through this list. I hope you see that I this is not my personal list, as I've explained before. This is a, a list of the greatest um, WWE superstars, I think, that is objective, um, in which I would say that most people would only shift around uh, the numbers by maybe at most five to, to three as opposed to um, in the WWE's own list which you can shift about people about 15 spaces some people should not even be on the list um, etc um, so I'm down to the top five um, now and coming in at number five is Probably my favourite superstar from the 80s and one of my favourite superstars of all time. Um, I think one of the icons, I mean, I, I, just, I just think he's so much more iconic than Shawn Michaels, much more iconic than, than The Undertaker, much more memorable. I think any time you've seen this guy, um, you will know who he is. Um, you, you could hear him from your kitchen. And, and you would know who this guy is, and that is Macho Man Randy Savage. Um, what a performer! Um, in the ring, psychology, the way he used to use Miss Elizabeth when he was doing his heel run, um, you know, putting her in the way of his opponents. Um, then in the ring, so great, you know, so you know, this kind of almost. Um, I wouldn't say a realism, but there was a passion um, into his in-ring style and, and the technicality and, and then his high flying. And then, of course, there were the promos. <laughs> the, I, I could honestly say he's one of the best promo guys of all time. I mean, if not the best promo type. If you're talking about a promo that is impactful, that you'll remember the person by immediately, I, I don't think there is, because any macho man promo you hear, it doesn't have, like, whereas The Rock, for instance, um, who is probably the best in the mic of all time, he was off on days. There were days where he was off, and if you had have watched that day when he was off, you might not think that much of The Rock, you might think that. Same with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh, same with uh, one of my favourites, as I told you, Kurt Angle. Same with... Jake the Snake, all of them, uh, down the line, Hulk Hogan, um, down the line of the great promo cutters, okay, Paul Orndorff, um, you know, you just go down and down the line, uh, Million Dollar Man, there were days where you just thought, well, that was, that was average, no, that didn't, that didn't, but the thing with Macho Man, even if he did do an average promo, even if it, you'd still remember the goddamn guy. You know, you'd still remember that. What the hell, who the hell is that guy? You know, you'd immediately be like, who the hell is that guy? I, in that sense, he didn't do a bad promo, um, because you know, ultimately, um, he was uh, just so memorable, so charismatic, exuded. Um, uh, an undeniable charisma through his voice and his mannerisms and just the, easily the most imitated, um, I think, wrestler of all time. Maybe Stone Cold Steve Austin is now kind of... Uh, Hulk Hogan, obviously, uh, but Stone Cold and Hulk Hogan, and then I think it would be Macho Man Randy Savage. Um, because just... Yeah, dig it about it. Like, the, the, that's... And it was him, you know, and that that was the the great thing about it. So yeah, I think he is one of easily one of the greatest of all time, and one of the great best all round performers. If not, you know, I'd say Kurt Angle than him, except he was a better babyface than Kurt Angle was. Kurt Angle was a much better heel. Um, but Randy Savage was also an equally good heel to, to Kurt Angle, so you could say the best all round, except I, I go back and forth with this because these are not really my two favourites of all time, except Kurt Angle was better in the ring, my apologies, but uh, and way better in the ring, I'm sorry, Matcha Man Randy Savage. 
um, in terms of just move it, moves and technicality as opposed to ring psychology. Um, but yeah, uh, Macho Man Randy Savage, one of the greats. My number four is Andre the Giant. Now this is somebody whose career I didn't enjoy much of, but everything I've seen I can immediately see why beyond being a giant this guy was so charismatic and so and, and why he you know affected the crowd so much I, you can just see it he had th th that smile that, that just a, something that lit up his face and um, you know I think not anyone can just pull off a, the giant role and become you know a, a big time star I'll even give Big Show credit there that not, you know, it's not everyone who can do that. And, and Andre the Giant certainly had that, and um, he had real mainstream appeal, real, real mainstream appeal, and that's why I put him at number four. I mean, he's one of the most mainstream guys ever. He was the first wrestler, I believe, to even do a movie um, with the Princess Bride, which was actually a fairly, a fairly big movie he was in um, for the time. Um, as well as other other movies um, as well. So. He's the one who paved the way for The Rock. He's the one who paved the way for Hulk Hogan. He's the one who, you know, he paved the way for any um, movie star. Uh, sorry, wrestler with movie or um, um, movie star ambitions. Um, and yeah, he was just. Uh, I wouldn't say he was the the best in the ring, but his psychology was great. Especially when, if you look at the feud between, um, I think it was the Million Dollar Man. And I can't remember who it was, either Hulk Hogan or Macho Man, where he, he the Million Dollar Man, had bought the um, bought the belt off um, Andre the Giant. Then you really see how Andre the Giant can work a crowd, you know, um, and how his presence is just always felt when he's there. Uh, you know, he's someone you can't take your eyes off, and that's 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 a superstar. Um, so that's number four, Andre the Giant. Um, uh, number three is The Rock, The Great One, The Brahma Bull, um, at times, because I'm very capricious, my favourite of all time, um, exceeds the next two who I've put higher just to show again that I'm trying to be objective about this list, um, easily the superstar with the most mainstream appeal, but beyond that, um, the rock to say about the rock i mean i really really think this guy is possibly the most talented person to ever uh, step in the ring when he was on he was so on he was so muddy he was so funny i mean like really i i, I and i'm I'm talking about before he became a baby face, um, uh, you know, when he was a, when he was a heel, I just always thought he was hilarious. He was what got me back into wrestling in the Attitude Era, not Stone Cold Steve Austin. I was always more of um, a rock guy than a Stone Cold Steve Austin guy. And um, that was just because he just had that style and charisma and... That, that that ability to to speak and and that got you into the matches you know because because you desperately you know he could he could make you so on edge of your seat because of his character that you were so rooting for him that the matches just became electrified you know he didn't have to be the best in ring although in ring as well i think he's underrated especially during his heel times he was really really great in ring because what does the heel do? The heel is supposed to make the good guy look really, really good, while at the same time look, making them look like they're in genuine jeopardy. There, there is a threat there, and that is exactly what the Rock character did as a heel. Um, as a baby face, he he brought you in because he he, he was it was kind of Xena but better, you know, like Xena without the three moves of Doom, where where. The, the ending was a bit more unpredictable 
um, in how he would win. Um, he would get beat down a lot of the way through, um, and then you know get uh, his win back, do some moves, and then you know get beat down a bit more, and then suddenly you know get back into it somehow, and 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 finally the good guy wins, and he, therefore he told the great story as a babyface, and you were so invested in him that you know. And, and 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 just his flair and style in the ring was electrifying. You know the little flip up, the you know his athleticism in the ring, um, his explosiveness in the ring, his just his little kicks that he did with the way he, he, he'd have these jarring um, kicks. You can't see what I'm doing on under the thing, but he'd have these jarring kicks. And so innovative, you know, like who who was who who was speaking. On, um, you know, in the announcers' table, um, you know, uh, comment, color commentating on his own match, you know, picking up a camera to film his own match, you know, all of these innovations that The Rock came up with, um, easily one of the greatest of all time. Uh, I, I love The Rock and have mad respect for him. Um, although I'm pissed off, he didn't go to the Hall of Fame speech of. Um, Mick Foley, I think that was really out of order, but apart from that, he's got a blank slate from And yes, he could. And that's all that really matters in when it comes to wrestling, I think. I don't think you have to be technically proficient or be able to pull off a multi multitude of suplexes or anything like that. It's just, can you get the crowd behind you or against you? That is your job, to get the crowd behind you or against you. But not against you as in against you, like I don't want to, I'm going to change the channel against you. It's against you where it's like, I've got to watch what you're going to do next against you. And that is exactly what Hulk Hogan could do. Hulk Hogan could do that as a baby face. Hulk Hogan could do that as um, as a, um, you know, uh, I, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a heel. He could do it as both in his NWO stint as well. And one of the things about Hulk Hogan is he's, the guy behind, you know, the guy behind who the success. There is no wrestling really at this time as we know it without Hulk Hogan. He revolutionized the industry, much in the same way um, that you could say, you know, The Rock kind of did as well, kind of, um, or was part of a, of a revolution in the industry. Um, but Hulk Hogan really, really held the industry on his back for a very, very, very long time, and it's one of the greatest. Um, plain and simple. I still, I'm still a Hulkamaniac um, to this day, even though I like, you know, people like Macho Man and Mr. Perfect and you know, like other guys from the era more than Hulk Hogan. I, I will always have a respect for Hulk Hogan and the way he worked his matches. If you look at the way he worked the match with The Rock. And then you'll see why Hulk Hogan is so great. You watch the match between him and The Rock at WrestleMania and the way he worked that match, and you see why he's great. That, that for me, solidified it. I was like, okay, whatever you want to say about him in the past, that is why he, he got to that level that he got to, and, and he deserved it. Um, he, backstage politics or not, he had the talent to be there. Um, great promo cutter as well. Uh, the, you know, people try and make out like he wasn't nowadays. But again, what is a good promo? A good promo is just somebody. It's something that gets you pumped up for the match. And at the time, he was perfect for that. Yes, he's a bit antiquated. He's a bit old-fashioned. But at the time, it was money. So, and that's all that matters. Um, and number one um, WWE superstar of all time is, of course. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, or wrestler of all time, is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, he's the man. I mean, um, 
he revolutionized the industry he sold out um, more consistently than any other performer in the history um, of the business um, you know rock had some brief periods where he could have he could have matched him I mean he did have the rock had the, the, the highest rated segment but in terms of consistency on a week-to-week -week basis um, it was definitely stone cold without a doubt uh, sold the most merchandise um, one of the most charismatic one of the best on the mic I didn't even really get because I used to be a rock guy as I said um, and I didn't really appreciate Stone Cold for a long long time until he came back in 2001 because I started watching in late 98 um, not so much and then picked up more in 99 and then um, 2000 and onwards to about 2002 or something like that and I didn't really, really get the appeal of Stone Cold. I just thought, this, this, all the years is just some, you know, anyone could do this. Be a rebel against the boss. And his gimmick is really easy to pull off. I just thought well, it's an easy gimmick to pull off. But what The Rock was doing was, for me, far more innovative, far more cool. It took me time to really get, like, what it was about Stone Cold. And what it was about Stone Cold is he was real, you know. This was a guy who was real, a bigger than life, real life rebel personality. He had great humour, he was witty, you didn't get it at first, but he was in a sense wittier than even The Rock. The Rock probably wrote down some great promos, but I'm talking off the cuff, you know, straight off the top of the head, witty guy. Um, so funny on the mic um, and it was in 2001 that that was really solidified for me where I think Stone Cold went and upped his game because he knew he, he now needed to compete with The Rock and I think in 2001 he had a better year than The Rock and The Rock didn't have a, another really good year until he turned heel again in 2003 you know um, during that whole period uh, Stone Cold wiped the floor with him you know, for, for just, even though I was more of a rock fan from because of his 98, 97, 98, 99 kind of runs. But uh, I have to say, like, Stone Cold was easily the most entertaining. And he was entertaining even before. Even when I didn't like him because I was into the rock more, Stone Cold, I have to admit, he was the perfect foil for the rock. You know, he really was. No one else could have done it. They had to have each other um, to play off. They needed each other. Right? And uh, no one was as big enough a character to stand up to this larger than life. It would have fallen flat if it was, say, Shawn Michaels, or if it was Bret Hart against um, The Rock, or something like that. It would have just fallen completely um, flat. Uh, he, the Rock needed Stone Cold, you know, and um, yeah, I just, I really, I can't say more about the guy. I mean, the guy is real, and that's why a lot more fans, I think, of wrestling itself. He's the biggest within wrestling. I mean, Rock has more mainstream appeal, but within wrestling, and a lot of the reason Rock has that mainstream appeal is on the back of Stone Cold Steve Austin, because of what Stone Cold Steve Austin did for uh, those couple of years in the Attitude Era, which got the mainstream eye on wrestling again. So, you know, there's that. But, um, you know, as I was saying, the, the, the Rock is an actor playing a character. Uh, Dwayne Johnson was playing The Rock. Stone Cold Steve Austin was Stone Cold Steve Austin, and that's why we, we love him. He was, he's almost that kind of macho man style character you know where like you hear him and immediately you know it's him and he's identifiable and he's funny and he brings you up and he brings you down and um you know i think his heel turn actually was very good but he was always a better a baby face um probably the best baby face the industry has ever seen he's the one baby face you can never say well that was really cheesy you know he was always always like really really cool uh, baby face or heel he just loved him um 
And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about Stone Cold Steve Austin. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is my list. Stone Cold Steve Austin is number one. Um, I hope I've given all good reasons um, for why. Uh, please like and subscribe, as I said. Give me your reasons if you think I'm wrong for my top five or any of the the ones that you you know any of the list. Um, you can give your reasons and um, you know or, or reply to to this video um, and tell me if you think it's unobjective that, I, that there's some subjectivity in it. But um, yeah, that was my list of the top 50. It's taken me some time and more than I thought, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed.